But you know what's funny about, about Venus is this is something that Rocket Lab, um, the times that I've talked to Peter Beck in the last year, because last December I think was the first time, no, I think even the first time I talked to him in like 2018, he's just been like obsessed with Venus and he wants to send something to Venus. And guess what? So this is, they took the time, uh, Rocket Lab took the time to. <laughs> well, hello there, Venus. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Did they steal our logo? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> maybe we stole theirs. Did we actually. steal theirs is the question. <laughs> I don't know. Which came first? Well, we changed ours <laughs> to black sure recently, first. so tisk tisk on us. Copyright um, claim submitted. <laughs> But so, uh, so Rocket Lab, yeah, they sent out this tweet after all this announcement saying, well, hello there, Venus. Congrats to the teams behind this exciting research. Rocket Lab is planning a private mission to Venus in 2023 using Electron to launch a photon satellite that we talked about last week or two weeks ago to the planet's atmosphere in hopes of providing more data in search for life. The Rocket Lab's already on top of this. This is something that they, this is their, like, this is their ultimate dream. It's, it's you know, there's a lot of hype around it. They've been planning this for a while. Their new spacecraft is capable of sending something like, it might only be like 20 or 40 kilograms or something to Venus, but that's plenty for a scientific instrument these days. You know, these days, scientific instrumentation can be relatively small and efficient. And thanks to microchips and microprocessors and everything, you know, compared to what we're sending in the 60s and 70s to Venus, like, you know, we could send, uh, we just haven't sent that much stuff there. And it's like, what are we doing? It's the coolest not coolest it's the warmest i don't know it's <laughs> it's it's just a very venus, interesting venus planet. is so hot right now <laughs> there's a heated debate going on about venus but that that makes me really excited that rocket lab's already just like yeah baby we got this we'll we'll do it for you guys and it, it could be really cheap we could they could do a mission to Mar, Mar, uh, venus for like five million or something like that's insane Sounds, seems legit so have have we ever launched anything to venus that just kind of hung out in the atmosphere instead of going down to the surface like i, I mean, mean what, some with a balloon or something to just kind of hang out up there i don't think we've done just a purely we've done orbiters and we've done yeah. landers but i don't think we've ever done the whole land Floaters. in the atmosphere thing well is i'm sorry do you, do you know if um their plans is is it to do an orbiter mission or I to actually go to, into the I atmosphere i think it's to go into the atmosphere that's kind of what Peter Beck told me is like, you know, you could just doesn't take much of a, a balloon or a buoyancy device to offset and have a spacecraft just floating in the atmosphere. So I think he's making it sound like, you know, they carry with them a small balloon tank or drop some dead weight if they needed to or something, you know, to make it so yeah. it could float. And then yeah. the hard part is the further if you go too deep in the atmosphere, you're screwed because it yeah. is so hard to communicate through. Um, it's really hard to get any oh, okay. data through the atmosphere. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's so it could be something, though, that they still can, you know, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Ever, like, have you ever heard about the mechanical landers concept? There's NASA has this like challenge. Hey, if we'll, I don't know, we'll award you a prize or something. If you come up with a purely mechanical lander that will still for be able to. For Venus? For Venus. Oh, okay. That literally. <laughs> The idea being, I don't remember what it is, but you, it literally has to be powered by like the winds on Venus or something. So you have like a turbine or something mechanically spinning the wheels. And then it has to be able to do so, like some of the concepts where they want to know like kind of the terrain and be able to map out the terrain and have it be like Roomba like where if it hits a rock, it turns or whatever it hits mm -hmm. a rock turns. And all of those things would change like mechanical switches and and then what they do is like reflect a laser down onto it and look at these mechanical switches to know where they're at and tracking the thing as it drives around Venus to be able to get data without it being reliant on like electronics, which just get fried in, in 10 minutes. Oh, huh. okay. that's awesome. Which yeah. is insane. Like if people figure that out, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Pure like, mechanical. Software. We don't need your software. Okay. <laughs> Hardware only baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one quick thing, less maybe the words, uh, to kind of wrap up the Venus thing. Um, you're familiar with the Bepi Colombo mission? Yeah. What Did was you say that? Blippi? Blippi Colombo. Uh, yeah. So it's it's actually going to Mercury. That's its final destination. But oh, it does swing right. by that's Venus right. twice on the way. And since they announced this discovery, um, the people running that mission, which is actually the ESO, 
Oh, ESA and JAXA. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, so they're going to swing by um, Venus a couple of times. They may take some measurements while they swing by. No way. Venus. Already on the first pass is October 15th. Isn't there yeah, ice so on Mercury? They, a, a Maybe what? on the... On There's the, ice on Mercury, right? Well, oh, I thought you said a base on Mercury. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't remember. Is Mercury Mercury tidally locked? Because if so, then the far side, like the dark side, would think, be absolutely freezing. And the I think it rotates like one and a half times per orbit or something like despite that. Despite Mercury's not, extreme it's not quite heat, tidally there locked. is permanent ice at the planet's poles, according yeah. to data from NASA's Messenger probe, which was Crazy. in 2011. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So this article is saying that um, I guess the way the mission is kind of already designed the first time that it passes by, which I guess would be in you know a month, um, the the cameras won't be focused in the right direction, and it's kind of too soon uh, of a of a pass to to adapt for that right now. But it's going to pass by again, I believe, next year. That sounds right. So they're going to doing multiple gonna... Venus flybys to lower its periapsis yeah. around the sun yeah so they'll be able to do it then but they can't quite do it in this next month it's just too they too need soon. some of that canon autofocus magic <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i didn't know that bevy colombo is gonna try and snag some science on its way by now other than yeah, calibration that's, that i wonder if awesome. they sit down and do that right because like a lot of times i mean not that i've ever worked in something so intense but like just in software development and tech there's this concept of scope creep where you look at something and you go, oh, yeah, okay, so this is the main thing we're trying to do. Oh, but since we're doing that, we could also do this. And then, you know, because we're doing that, we yeah. could also do this. Like, at some point, who decides, no, that's too much? Like, you know, because right. each little thing is only incremental, incrementally harder, but when you add up 500 of those, now the, yeah. the mission's impossible, essentially. Yes. You're just like, forget it, you know. Who decides yep. that? Is there, like... Is that Jim Bryden sign, or is there like somebody is like you know whoever's in charge of the mission is like yeah okay this is all we're doing we're not doing anything else, you know? I think it, it a lot of it depends on yeah like what the you know what their whole catalog kind of looks like you know because there could be down times or like relatively free times where like well we could actually fit this in and I'm sure it's up to mission managers and mission planners to to really weigh out you know is it worth our time to do something like this when we should be preparing for this yeah. or we have this event coming up that we need to be ready for like if it fits into a schedule you know i'm sure it's but yeah scope creep absolutely <laughs> like let's just have it fly by jupiter while yeah, we're at it, you like, know, like, while we're there or like <laughs> yeah. uh is there a i wonder if they they bake into missions um error time like so let's say okay cool so let's let's plan every single minute of this mission down to what the astronauts are supposed to be doing and yada yada but we know that there's a probability that something could go wrong here so instead of just like backing up minute to minute let's have like a 20 minute yeah. break or oh, you know absolutely. something where like hey if something goes wrong we have a little gap no the international space station the time on the station is literally like planned around like minute per minute but with like big um you know a checklist style but like big uh windows of like it approximately this much time you know so yeah. there is like room should, for errors if no, if everything goes right it should take five minutes so we're going to give you an hour and a half yeah right something kind like of. that hey guys thanks so much for watching this clip from our show if that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode you can go to olfpod.com slash yt and if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.